99% of people are focusing on the wrong thing. And if you don't change that right now, it's going to be too late. Let me explain. Software as we know it is being commoditized, meaning literally a five-year-old kid can build full stack web apps. If that sounds like an exaggeration, just watch this. I wrote a prompt inside GPT-5 Thinking, which is OpenAI's new model. And the prompt is telling GPT-5 to build a modern web app for me that's gonna help me stay accountable with my daily tasks. All I've done is I've just said, these are the core features I want you to have inside the app. This is the tech requirements and this is the deliverables I want you to give back to me. So literally one single prompt. All I have to do is send this through. And then two minutes later, ChatGPT will give me 801 lines of code. 801 lines of code from one single prompt. That's insane. Now, what's even more crazy is I can literally click on run code. And just like that, my app comes up. One prompt, one output from ChatGPT and a full app. Now, just like I instructed ChatGPT, it's an app that's gonna keep me accountable for my daily task. I can say, let's say the first task is task one. It's gonna take me about one and a half hours. Crazy, I can even say what time I wanna start it. Let's just say eight. 50 p.m. And then notes, I'll just say it's a difficult task. I can add that task there, boom. And then just like that, the task comes up. That's insane. And then I can click on start. And as you guys can see, the timer starts running. Crazy. I mean, obviously I'd probably have the timer a little bit bigger if this was an actual app, but it's insane. Literally one prompt gave me this full app. Now, back in the day, this would take ages to build. This project by itself will probably be something you'd at least charge 10K for. Like I can literally add another task saying task two and say it's gonna take me half an hour and it's gonna show up here as well. And I can say I did this as a completion bar, which is gonna tell me I've done 50% of my tasks. And if I click on both, that's 100% of my task. Now, what's even crazier is that I didn't even write that first prompt. I literally told ChatGPT to write me a prompt that will create me an app. And then I grabbed that same prompt and gave it back to ChatGPT and taught it to create the app. I hope that now you're convinced that a five-year-old kid can literally build apps. And I know that developers out there right now are looking at me saying, no, but this isn't an actual app. There's no backend. It's not actually deployed. It's missing this and this is imperfect and blah, blah, blah. And honestly, I agree with you too. But you can't say that having one prompt create that app, even if it was just inside ChatGPT, isn't absolutely insane. Now, most of you guys know that AI capabilities are getting better and better at an exponential rate. And this is what an exponential curve looks like. As you go through time, the curve gets steeper and steeper, meaning the rate of improvement increases. So let's say we're here right now. And that is GPT-5, the newest model that came up from OpenAI that I just showed you create an app from one single prompt. If we extrapolate this exponential curve from where we are right now, how many years do you reckon it's gonna take until the Frontier model can create a full stack app, front end, back end, deployed everything with one single prompt? How long do you think it's gonna take? Is it gonna take one year? Is it gonna take two years? You might even say, no, it's gonna take five years. Okay, it's gonna take five years, but it's going to get there. You'd have to be a fool to say, no, this is never going to get there. The reality is that coding is being commoditized. Back in the day, being a software developer was a great job. It was very high paying. You were very in demand. You could build startups that could go to billions and millions of dollars. But the reality is that right now we're moving towards a world where software development is being commoditized. So whether it takes two years or three years or one year or six months or five years or 10 years, it does not matter because we are heading there. And so if you run a custom software development agency like I used to, you have to accept that at some point, your services are going to be a lot less valuable. And that is just a straight reality. In the future, what's gonna happen is companies are literally going to build their own internal apps. So a company will build their own version of a CRM. A company will build their own version of an invoicing app or an ERP system or whatever it is. The barriers to entry to building applications will reduce so much that literally anyone will be able to do it. That is the world that we're moving towards. So I want you to just reflect on that point for one moment because it's really important that you actually accept it as the truth and as the reality. And I'm telling you this as someone that literally runs an agency that builds software. I'm telling you this as someone that spent years in computer science school. Coding is not going to be a skill that's required for much longer. The barriers to entry to building applications is gonna to reduce to almost zero. And so if you've accepted that point, I can now tell you the most important thing that you 
you're ever going to hear. I'm telling you, this is probably the most important thing anyone is ever going to tell you. Right now, your focus should not be on building apps. Right now, your focus should be on building a distribution channel. In the future, literally anyone's going to be able to build an app. As I said, coding will be commoditized. It will be so easy to build applications. Well, let's imagine what that world would look like. In a world like that, the only thing that actually matters is distribution, meaning your ability to get in contact with the person that will want your product or service. I see 99% of people focusing their attention here. Everyone's trying to learn how to become a no-code developer. Everyone wants to learn how to build SaaS products. Everyone wants to learn how to build technology. Not enough people are actually realizing that the real limited resource that's going to make a massive difference in their position tomorrow is not their great product market fit. It's actually their distribution channels. So the question you should be asking yourself right after this video is how am I going to ensure that I have huge distribution in the next couple of years? And so making this practical, what I'm basically saying is at this very moment in time, you have to be thinking, how am I going to build a social media presence around my brand? Whether that's your personal brand, whether that's your business brand. How are you going to get in front of the right people? How are you going to build an audience or a community of people that would potentially want to buy your product or service? That's the question you should be asking yourself right now. But building a social media presence isn't the only way you can build distribution. As I said, the idea of distribution is just to get in front of the right people. So if you're a super techie guy and you don't want to build a social media presence, that's completely fine. What you should do is you'd figure out who your target market is and then just try and get in front of them as quickly as you can. So if you're building a product, what I recommend is launch that product as quickly as possible, even if it's not perfect, even if it's just 20% good, even if it just solves one very narrow crappy problem, launch it as quickly as you can and then try and build a distribution channel inside that target market. So for example, if you're targeting lawyers, solve one very narrow problem for lawyers and then just try and build as much distribution inside that target market as you possibly can. Now, one way to do it, as I said, is social media. Another way to do it is just by talking to customers. Another way to do it is by building an email newsletter. There's a million ways you can build distribution channels. Just all you have to be thinking right now is how can I make my distribution as big as humanly possible? This is what's going to differentiate you from everyone else in a world where literally anyone can build a product. If you don't believe me, bookmark this video and then come back and revisit it in three years time. I guarantee you that distribution is going to be a very, very, very important thing. Honestly, even right now, you need massive distribution to be able to launch successful products. That's why, for example, YouTubers can literally release an application that might be average in the market that they're competing in. But just because the YouTuber has 500,000 or a million subscribers, they get their first five to 10,000 users like that. So your focus as someone that wants to make it in business or wants to be able to seize the AI opportunity or just wants to have a bright and successful future shouldn't be how can I build the absolute best product? It should be how can I build the biggest distribution channel right now. And the reality is that it's literally now or never. You either do it now or you can never do it. Let me tell you why. As AI becomes widely adopted, the noise in the marketplace also increases exponentially. What I mean is this. So if we think of it in terms of content creation, as the AI capabilities are becoming better and better, what's happening is we're getting more and more AI generated content posted on platforms like YouTube and TikTok and all the other ones. So right now, at this very point in time, let's say if you wanted to be an AI creator, you'd probably be competing with 5, 10, 15 other creators, assuming that you're targeting a specific niche or a specific keyword. But two years down the line where AI generated content becomes more widely adopted and there's all these fake AI influencers using a hey gen to create avatars that sit there like this and talk to a camera like they're a real person, what will happen is you will be competing with 1,500 other fake AI influencers on that specific keyword. So from 15 to 1,500. Now I'm literally pulling these statistics out of my ass, but you get the point. As AI generated content increases, the amount of content that you're competing with also increases. And so the possibility of you being able to actually succeed with your content reduces significantly. So from a content creation side, it's going to get very, very difficult to actually make a real brand over the next couple of years. Now, as I said, also from a product 
perspective, if literally a five-year-old kid can start building applications, well, in two years time, when that becomes widely adopted, literally every 13, 14, 15 year old, or every 40, 50, 60 year old guy that has nothing to do with technology is going to start building apps for different verticals. And so at that point, apps are going to be like lollipops. Every single vertical is going to have a gazillion new people that are coming up with different applications trying to solve problems. So the future of the marketplace is going to be extremely noisy. And so the longer you wait to build up these distribution channels or to launch your products, it's going to be way more difficult for you to actually be successful. And that is the reality. I like to say that the difficulty of actually building a distribution channel over time is also an exponential curve. So the longer you wait, the rate of difficulty is just going to increase and increase and increase at higher and higher rates. So start right now because starting tomorrow is literally something you cannot afford. Now, honestly, most developers and engineers that I've met have all complained about the fact that building applications is becoming really easy and their jobs are becoming less important. But what they don't see is that right now, there's a massive opportunity right in front of them that honestly most of them aren't taking advantage of. And that massive opportunity is created by them being early adopters of this new technology, right? What us people that are super deep in AI don't understand is that we're super, super early to this. We think that literally everyone right now is already building applications from one prompt on ChatGPT. They're not. 99% of people don't even know ChatGPT can actually do that. So being an early adopter of this new technology has given us access to this massive arbitrage, this massive opportunity that we can take advantage of before we hit widespread adoption. Let me explain what this opportunity is. Let's say, for example, if you're on a software development agency and your job is building software for clients. Well, what would happen, let's say three years ago, when someone would come to you and ask for a software development job is you'd figure out how many hours of human labor that job will take. And then you will charge them a certain amount. Let's say you charge them $50,000 for a software. And then you'd have to pay off your expenses, like the employees that actually worked on that software. And you'd probably take home maybe 30% of that as profits. So it wasn't a very, very high margin business because you had to hire expensive engineers to actually build out those software for you. And the reality of building software is that it takes a lot of work. There's so much coding that goes into it, so much testing, so much bug fixing. Well, the reality today with current AI capabilities is that you can literally build a software that would have taken maybe two or three people six months, three years ago, maybe in one month with just one person with the use of AI. So you can have literally one developer use coding agent tools to build out a software that would have otherwise taken a team of two or three people six months, three years ago. And because there's this lack of knowledge in the marketplace about current AI capabilities, you can still charge $50,000 for a software today as long as you actually built a good software. But the amazing thing is now, instead of having a team of two or three people do it for six months, you'd have a team of one person do it for one month with, with the help of a $20 subscription of Cursor or some similar coding agent like that. So your margins are probably gone from 30% to 90%. And that is the huge opportunity that's right in front of you. You can build software for clients that would have otherwise taken you six months, just two or three years ago, within one month with just one person. So the expenses that you have for building software for clients has decreased significantly, but because there's this lack of knowledge in the marketplace of what the current capabilities are, you can still charge that high amount and have a massive profit margin in front of you. That is the advantage of being an early adopter. Now, this isn't gonna stay this way for a long time. The reality is that as we progress, more and more people are gonna realize that they can build apps with minimal effort. And so they're gonna start also offering software development as a service. And this is gonna continue until the point that software development is literally gonna be commoditized, like exactly how I was saying at the very start of the video. And at that point, where literally five-year-old, 10-year-old, 15-year-old kids are also able to build software. Well, a 50,000 dollar project today would probably only be worth five, six, maybe $10,000 in the future. And so at that point, you probably wouldn't want to be running a software development agency anymore. But right now, because you're one of the early adopters, you can literally run a very high margin software development agency using AI tools instead of a team of very expensive software engineers. Now that's if you want to go down the custom development route. If you want to go down the productization route and you want to build products, well, that's completely fine. The beauty of having ChatGPT write 800 lines of code with one single product prompt is that you can literally build your applications in a week or two weeks instead of two months or three months. And that means that you can launch super quickly.
click and then focus on actually getting distribution. Because as I said, your goal should be distribution. If you have distribution, you're going to be rich. If you have a huge top of funnel, the rest of the funnel will come together, but you need to have that massive top of funnel. So the points that I want you to take away from this video is that number one, development is going to be commoditized. Whether you like it or not, development is 100% going to be commoditized. That is the reality. And in a world where literally a five-year-old kid can build software, the thing that differentiates you from everyone else is your distribution. So right now, instead of trying to learn the best no-code applications or learning how to play the violin, you should focus all of your energy on building a massive distribution channel inside your target audience. That is the highest leverage activity that you can do today. And so I hope that this video isn't just one of those videos you're going to watch and completely forget about in one or two or three days. Think about what I just said and try and implement it into your life and into your business right away. But anyways, if you guys found this video valuable, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.